Of all the people that we photographed, I think my favorite was Avery. He lived in, a, in an apartment that he uh, described as a bunker. You want to try sitting in your command bunker? Sure. You want me to... You think just leave everything there? Leave everything there for the meantime? Stretch it out. He covered every square inch of the room with something. There was a sticker or a poster or a note. And it was so intricate that I could have spent hours in there just looking at the, the minutia on the wall. There and there. I had a really good time on, on that shoot. Gun owners are everyday people. There's a lot of people who assume that because you own guns, you're uh, more of a violent person. I, I don't believe that. Uh, I, I, I like the idea of your book because it, uh, it shows a good cross-section of real people. Okay, fantastic. It'll be great to meet you. Thank you, Mark. Bye. All right, Mark, 7 o'clock. He's cool with everything. He sounds like a really nice guy. Yeah. Lori and I are both hunters. Um, we're both competition shooters. And uh, we both shoot just for the fun of it as well. I got lucky because I have a wife that's enthusiastic about it. And uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't be a happier guy. Well, I, mean, I feel sorry for the guys that don't have wives <laughs> that enjoy it. Mark and Lori were another really interesting subject. They were a, a couple from Portland who just seemed like really oh, yeah. <laughs> nice, fun people. And I never would have guessed if I saw them on the street that their personal hobby was collecting machine guns. They're all different. Yeah, very much so. And that's why we like having different kinds of every kind. For me, a big part of owning guns is it's a reflection of what I consider freedom in, in our country. I think the Second Amendment is kind of the reset button of the Constitution. And when the others start to fail, then it's time to look to it to, for um, redress. The United States is pretty big. And I think it's, I don't know, it's a lot of ambition getting the whole thing, but at the same time it's a little bit of um, not quite knowing how big the country is until you actually drive across it. What I want this book to be is to be told entirely by the people who own them. So there's uh, no political introduction, there's no slant one way or the other. Hello. Hi. Diego? Yes. Kyle? This is Bill? Hello. Nice to meet you. Come on inside. At this point, it's sort of unclear why I have a gun. I don't really know. It's, it feels like a piece of property that I just kind of ended up having. It was like a, a period in my life when I was more interested in my rights, you know? I was like, oh, I can vote, and I can register for the draft, and smoke cigarettes, and I, look, I can buy guns, and so I just kind of ended up buying guns. I've had a lot of anti-gun people look at the book and say, wow, these people look like idiots, how are you convincing them to do this? And then the same pictures, uh, pro-gun people will look at and say, this is really great, this is you know, wonderful that you know, you're showing this. I understand what the statistics are about guns in, in America specifically, and um, you know, I believe in nonviolence, and you know, it's a, it's, it, there is a certain amount of shame that you have with owning guns. You know, you're like, you don't necessarily want to admit it. America is a lot bigger than I thought. Uh, it, it takes longer to get from one place to another, and people are different in different parts of the country. Uh, some places are, are almost like their own isolated countries, and I've met people who I never ever would have met and been exposed to ideas that I wouldn't have been exposed to otherwise. This isn't a book about guns, it's a book about people. My goal is that people with differing political views about this topic will be able to stand in an art gallery together and look at the same piece and have a conversation about it.